First, I want to thank Steel City Interactive for sponsoring this trip. Travel and food was included as well as free gear and merchandise. So that definitely has to be disclosed, but all opinions in this video will be 100% my truthful opinion of what I experienced on this trip. I know everybody has been highly anticipating this video to understand exactly what in the world did we all play. I feel this intro is the best place to set your expectations for the specific build that we got our hands on. When the devs stated gameplay focused, they meant it. This is strictly 100% gameplay focused. Now, what does that mean in detail? Well, it means that the build we were given to play was incredibly limited. We only had 11 fighters to choose from. Those fighters were Kel Brook, Caleb Plant, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano, Carl Froch, Connor Ben, Arturo Gotti, Mickey Ward, and the hidden and pleasant surprise of a fully rendered in-game model of Terrence Crawford. We were only able to use three arenas, WBC Arena, which is the nice big arena seen here in the gameplay that we all know and love, the CompuBox Arena, and the cool arena with the green tint that we also all love seen here. Keep in mind that the trailer we just saw is the exact gameplay we were playing. So what you are looking at is what we were looking at. The difference is we were controlling what was on screen. We had access to seven different camera angles and everyone liked camera angle two by a mile over all the others. We were only able to select fight now from literally this screen right here. And we had to play two players there was not an option to play against the CPU and test out the current AI of the game. Here's another quick reality check. This game is still in pre-alpha, which means the game contains a lot of bugs. Once we started playing, it became very apparent why the screens could not be recorded. Bizarre things would happen all the time. For example, the cornerman was slowly inched to the center of the ring after every round in some games. So they would be fused in the ring from the chest up and essentially be under our feet with no collision with the corner men, but visually it was strange. But it was also in pre-alpha. Other things like KOs or knockdowns would start off great, but then end very janky as the fighter would start to spaz on the floor or the body would deform in an unrealistic way or even fly out of the ring through the ropes in an unrealistic way. Although the initial clinch felt and looked good as it is much easier to initiate them uh, than previous boxing games and works off of the physics. So for example, if someone punches around your head and you clinch, you basically get them in an over under simply because of where their limbs were located at the time. But since it was pre-alpha, many times the fighters would spaz and fold back to the floor after a clinch. Also, clinching will involve punches, as stated by the dev team during our visit, but this did not have that feature. Certain head movements like plants, weave, head movement didn't look good and looked very early on in development. Funny enough, Crawford was bugged where he could never switch stance and Fury was bugged where he could never go into loose footwork toggle. I found that to be hilariously ironic considering that they are the best in both of those things in real life as compared to everyone else in the build. Also, many times our punching, movement, or blocking would get stuck, meaning we could not punch, move, or block anymore and would have to press as many buttons as we could to try to break out of that bug or just ride out the round as a new round would reset it. So suffice to say, we played a limited game that also had boatloads of bugs and placeholders that didn't look good to use, like the running mechanic or taking a knee. But with all that being said, the core element, the actual boxing when everything was working was hands down the best boxing video game mechanics 
I had ever experienced in my life. Is the game perfect gameplay wise? No, and we'll talk more about that. But as a whole, no other boxing game has even come close to this when replicating the sport. Let's jump into it. Now, I'm not going to use this video to waste any time with the actual event experience, as that will come from a mega vlog that will be highly edited and will release in two days on the 30th of March at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Before you watch that vlog, however, grab a seat and maybe some popcorn because that vlog will be around one hour and 20 minutes long, breaking down the entire event experience and talking about the tournament we had in more detail. This video is strictly about the gameplay experience alone. The first thing that stuck out to me was how beautiful the graphics looked. I truly believe that no other game that I have ever played or laid my eyes on looks as good as ESBC. That includes Horizon Forbidden West. The gameplay trailers do not do the game's graphics justice. When you get your hands on the game, you will see how impressive it truly is. This game is just staggeringly beautiful. Every fighter looks like their real life counterpart to an extreme degree. So kudos to Steel City Interactive and 1024 for that. Once we were in the game, I immediately started testing out all the mechanics. I'll tell you which ones look good and which ones didn't look good to me. Punches look good, but still lack that desired pop. There were also moments where it was hard to tell who exactly landed the counter shot. There was a white flash that indicated a counter, and honestly, it felt needed to fully understand if someone was caught with a counter. Thinking about it, I would never know unless that white flash initiated. There may be an audio cue, but I didn't notice it during my gameplay. However, when these counters landed and the white flash came up, it did feel devastating, especially when you knew exactly who landed it. Another thing that just looks magnificent is the check punch. The way you are able to use that and be so diverse and deceptive with that is just something that we have never seen or experienced in a boxing video game. It is not punching, it is not stepping then punching or punching then stepping. It is punching and spinning, stepping all at the same exact time. And when done, it just looks perfect. The combination strings looked amazing, especially when you connect them all as the game is fully physics based. And just because you throw punches in range doesn't mean those punches will actually land, which makes it feel even more rewarding when they all do. You have to put yourself in the best positioning and range to be able to land more accurately. So when you put a combination together, when the moment is so fluid, where the person is constantly moving, it feels incredibly satisfying. However, the delay in the punches are jarring. It takes some time from when the buttons are pressed to have the punch actually shoot out. This creates a queued up system of punches that are even more delayed than Fight Night Champion. But Fight Night was a completed game, and to be fair, we were still playing a pre-alpha game. Also, it felt just right when using the analog stick to punch. It almost felt like I was punching faster with the sticks. I'm guessing the sticks required more motion as opposed to an instantaneous button press so it can easily catch up to the animation, but I'm a predominantly button pressing player when it comes to boxing games due to its quickness and accuracy. I use the sticks for situational punches only, so that's something that I would love to have fixed or improved. This queued up system in the beginning caused all of us to throw multiple additional punches that we did not want to throw. This happened for a while until we got the timing down, but they are working on making it more responsive as the dev stated during our Zoom calls. The movement in the ring is unparalleled. No other boxing game has ever allowed me to control distance to this degree. If I did not want my opponent on the inside, I was able to keep them at bay using the tools at my disposal. They have three forms of head movement, weave, slips, and stepping. If I flicked to the left of my opponent, my fighter would step and roll to his right, and vice versa. 
I found it to be very useful and intuitive. Flicking back just did a hop step and flicking forward also did a forward hop step. You need to be very careful when you do this, however, because hop stepping right in front of your opponent can leave you vulnerable and the animation has to complete before you can punch. I found myself using it only to enter a just outside of range position to start the process of inching closer in range. The game rewards you for being calm under pressure and moving the control stick slightly even amidst chaos or an attack so that you can close the distance with deceptive subtleness that can allow you to punch and move out of range masterfully was always rewarded. The weave is easily the worst head movement mechanic in the game to me. I don't know what it is, but it definitely doesn't feel good to use. I think the range of motion is too small or the speed is too slow, but I feel vulnerable if I use it for anything else other than the lean back pull counter. But they stated that they are still heavily working on the weave mechanic. Slips are 100% my favorite go-to for head movement. Without a doubt, they are quick, stylish, and carry much more range than the weave, but they come at a cost to stamina. However, there is nothing more beautiful than slipping multiple shots than coming back with a counter. Over time, I even learned to use it more effectively, as clicking the analog in and pressing the direction at the same time didn't always activate it. I was able to experiment and found out that if I click the analog in first, held it in, then slipped, I was able to accurately slip 100% of the time and even continue slipping in different directions off of holding the one click in. Now, with this game, not only is it buggy and pre-alpha, but it is also unbalanced since they are currently more focused on improving gameplay specifically. We saw ratings that were not accurate and just placed on the fighters as they didn't carry any impact on the game just yet. An example was Crawford at 78 overall, but he was a beast when using him regardless. What made the fighters different were their movements and mannerisms. My favorite ended up being Kel Brook when it was all said and done. He just felt the most comfortable to me. Another thing that is unbalanced at this time is the stamina. We would punch up to 1,500 punches in the fight and still have 85 to 95% stamina after 12 rounds. But in other fights, we would do the same thing and end up at 10% stamina. One cool thing, however, is that lower stamina did not create slower punches. It just made it so that you become vulnerable faster by the depletion of your stamina. And I love that. The switch stance is amazing. It's a super quick switch and makes it so that right after a punch or right before a punch, you can easily switch super fast. It was so good that I was able to throw a few punches while in range, switch stance, then throw two or three more punches and switch back, all while still being able to avoid getting hit. The switching is amazingly fast. The game also has the real Philly shell blocking, where the glove and arms are pressed up against the body. No trailers that we've seen so far have shown it off, and in this build, only Caleb Plant was able to do it. But it looks good. You actually have to manually weave around to get your opponent to hit your shoulder on your left side, as opposed to moving your glove automatically. No, you have to move your upper body to avoid getting hit when using the Philly shell. And that is a true Philly shell experience. This build was with the semi-auto blocking, which is head and body blocking, where you have to move between the two to avoid getting caught in combination mix-ups. We did not have the ability in this build to switch to the manual blocking. However, anyone who chooses semi-auto will be at a disadvantage when manual is available because blocking isn't guaranteed defense in this game. Anyone can position themselves correctly, use the appropriate punches, and punch right around your guard. A tactic that I use a lot to punish the guys when they stayed stationary while blocking. A special system that I had never seen was combination counters. So this was seen in our gameplay and was broken down to us in one of the Zoom call meetings. 
Essentially, you can slip, step, or weave, counter, and if you return fire with a quick combo that lands every landed string from the initial counter, as long as it all lands, will also count as a counter. So you get this devastating three punch blast, all creating a flash and heavy damage on screen that's a nice, clever addition to counters. Feints are tough to pull off with jabs because the animation is too fast for you to cancel. Hooks were easier to feint and the easiest are when you are loading up a power shot. I used the feints many times during my playthrough and it would create moments where my opponent would slip or weave prematurely and then I would punish them for avoiding early. Inside fighting looked good, even the shots to the body. But like I said before, positioning matters, and you always want to be in the best place possible to land your strikes accurately. Loose footwork toggle was a beauty to behold, and when you had that rhythm down, using it made you feel like a master boxer, who can deceive your opponents with movement as to what direction you were going. The aggressive fighter has no choice but to try to cut off the ring by anticipating your movements. Loose footwork makes that process much, much harder for your opponent. I found myself choosing moments to be on my bike, moments to sit down and attack. It's a feeling that is hard to explain until you actually get your hands on it and experience the fluidity of freely moving, stopping on a dime to move in the opposite direction, flowing in, popping out a quick combo as you pass by your opponent, then tiptoeing away. It's absolutely amazing. Now, the scorecards seem very balanced in my opinion. Day one, I went in with all my fight night muscle memory and was punished for it. For example, an early fight I had in the game, I thought I clearly won, but my opponent threw an even amount of punches to the head and body. I threw almost exclusively to the head. It's harder to do as the head is always moving and in fight night, the more headshots you get, the better. Not in this game. I lost the fight on the scorecards. I can confidently say that being good at Fight Night Champion made me the worst player out of the four on day one. I had to bite down and adjust to this game by breaking my brain into pieces and reconstructing it to this game's loop and flow. I needed to get rid of my muscle memory of previous boxing games. By the way, a lot of our fights made it to the 12th round and was decided by the judges, which I loved. You are truly rewarded for boxing as opposed to only being rewarded for trying to KO your opponent, as seen in previous boxing games. And the rounds all feel fun and exciting. You don't feel as if you just did three minutes for 12 rounds at all. Speaking of knockdowns, the get up mechanic is also the most clever and best mechanic ever. It works like this. There are two vertical bars in the center of the screen, with these moving red boxes inside those bars. You're tasked with using both triggers to move two arrows by clicking those triggers and try to keep them in the constantly moving red boxes. The longer you have it in the boxes, the more you fill up the get up meter. Once the get up meter is full, you then can get up as long as you make it before the 10 count. Here's the fun part. Depending on how badly you were hurt, and depending on your courage stats, even if it's the first time you get dropped or the seventh, those red bars can be smaller and move up and down faster and more erratic, giving us a sense of suspense regardless of when the knockdown takes place. Absolutely genius. There will also be judging variations based off of currently 40 different true life judges and their tendencies for scoring. That's crazy. Ash, the creative director at Steel City Interactive, also mentioned that a traits system is being implemented. Although we couldn't see it in our build, but for the career mode, for example, if you get KO'd two fights in a row, your fighter may become prone to getting KO'd for the rest of his career. Upping the stakes to ensure you take every fight seriously to avoid bad carryover traits. All the fighters that will be in the game will also have specific traits based off of their true life fighting styles. 
we gave a lot of suggestions to make the gameplay better than what it already is. Suggestions like we asked them to add better push where you can just bump them with your shoulder when in close range to create space, slipping and punching at the same time to punish your opponent as of right now all you can do is slip then return to position before you can attack. All in all, the game is not only fun to play, but also fun to watch, as matches can diverge into brutal Gotti vs. Ward-esque epic fights or poetic fluidity and stylish moving and punching, even chess match affairs with two fighters trying to outthink each other, or even a brutal boxing lesson from one guy completely outboxing his opponent. None of these have ever been replicated in this way by any other boxing game that I have ever played and I played a lot of them. After playing this game, I can honestly say I'm a little depressed because I don't know when I will get my hands on the game again. And after that gameplay, I can never really go back to Fight Night. And that's a shame because all I can think about is playing a game that has no release date. And being quite honest, after seeing all the work that still needs to be done to polish this game, I don't see it releasing in the summer, hopefully by the end of the year, but if not, then maybe 2023 summer is a possibility. I know one thing for sure, when this game releases, there will be absolutely nothing else that I will be playing. This event proved to me that we have some creative guys behind this game with a love and passion for the sport. Don't miss the first ever mega vlog dropping on the 30th of March at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, a vlog that documented the creator event where we played Esports Boxing Club for the first time. And also join me live for a live Q&A on April 1st for the Esports Boxing Club monthly wrap up right here on YouTube and hope to see you at the live stream. Peace out, guys.